So I got a text message the other night from the El Dorado County Sheriff, which is a county I used to live in back when I was in California, and it was a mandatory evacuation notice. Now, of course, I don't live there any longer, but obviously my old address was mandatorily evacuated due to the mosquito fire going on there right now. So first off, yes, this is why you would need a bug out bag, because had I needed to evacuate at that moment, it would have been nice to grab something that had a lot of sustainment within it to bring with me and then find out later whether or not I still had any of my other supplies left over. But that being said, one of the more dangerous things when it comes to these evacuations, and one of the things you really need to consider is what's happening in that area right now. And luckily one of my friends over on Patreon actually gave me a lot of this information to share with you all, just to give you an idea about how people are going to behave during a time of crisis. Right now with that evacuation occurring, looting is happening and looters are there in force trying to rob people blind while they're just trying to keep their friends and their family and everyone who lives with them safe and healthy and alive. Now, the tactics these people are using are well thought out and it's something that you might not have considered, so I wanted to share them with you and give you an idea about how people will behave during a large scale crisis. This isn't just something that happens in fantasy. People can be very terrible and they will do what they can to use whatever opportunity comes their way to come up on whatever they can versus what it is that you have going on in the sense of your loss. So. Understand these looters exist and that SHTF, regardless of how you want to look at it, will be very dangerous because there's some very terrible people out there that are willing to do some very awful things. Now, these looters are doing a, a lot of different things. One of the tactics they're using is they're showing up in PG&E contractor outfits, which PG&E is the gas and electric company out there in California, and they're showing up in these outfits going into homes that are empty, but in case they get caught, they have some kind of a backstory or alibi or whatever it is. So keep in mind that they're using disguises to get away with some of these crimes and using disguises for why they would be in that area when it's otherwise closed off to civilians. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that they're using scare tactics to get people out of their homes sooner than they would otherwise have to. So one of the things I was told about on Patreon from this friend of mine who's in that area, basically said that they are driving down the street in pickup trucks with megaphones and they're yelling out the window, hey, evacuate now, the fire is right down the street, you have to leave now. Right, So they're telling everybody to immediately evacuate. And what that does is it gets everybody panicked because they know evacuations were possible. They know that a mandatory evacuation might come. And all they hear is the sound of a megaphone telling them to leave their home right this instant. So a lot of people, especially if you're in fire territory, would already have their vehicle packed up and have bags and everything else inside of it ready to go at a moment's notice. So they might run out of their home, get in their vehicle and leave. And a lot of these places are very far out. When I say that, what I mean is like an hour from civilization, right? So basically these people are heading at least an hour away before they figure out whether or not maybe they actually needed to evacuate. So this gives the looters time to go into their home and take whatever they want now that they have finally vacated. Now, can understand why this is so easy to accomplish because these people have been warned that this could possibly happen and now somebody who sounds official especially using a megaphone is telling them they have to leave they're not going to question it they're just going to go now the other thing that's happening which is even almost more concerning and something that you should definitely be keeping in mind based on how these scenarios unfold is that people with the intent to loot are showing up with u-haul trucks and multiple people in these trucks so that they can literally unload your entire home into a truck and then peace out right so the thing you have to really keep in mind with that is that it's coordinated it's organized they have invested into the concept and they have multiple people with them not only to move furniture or heavy appliances or whatever else it is they're trying to steal but to make sure that they are safe while doing so aka they're ready to handle any kind of threat that might come out of the woodwork based on their activity so this is not just oh hopefully they leave so we can get in there and steal everything and get out they are in expecting to encounter something. They know that that's a possibility. And so they're going in with force so that if that happens, yeah, they might eventually get in trouble or get caught or whatever it is. But in that immediate moment, they'll be able to handle whatever force is coming at them or at least have a better chance of dealing with it because they have more manpower. These things are all happening right now during the mosquito fire situation over in California. And these are things that will definitely be happening during any kind of an SHTF scenario. So anybody who tells you you don't need to be well armed, and you don't need to train firearm skills, and you don't need to worry about self-defense or self-preservation, and you don't need a bug out bag or an evacuation plan, and you shouldn't ever leave your home no matter what, well, these are all things that you still have to consider and have as options because this environment should show you in a microcosm 
just how dangerous a large scale event will actually become and just how people will behave during it. I wanted to share this with you because this is important information and you really have to watch out for yourselves when it comes to any kind of a natural disaster or an emergency. And this is what we should expect and this is what we should prepare for. And by preparing for it, we can handle it regardless of what it is that comes our way. And the other thing you can do to try to mitigate some of these losses or mitigate some of these issues when it comes to looting and things like that is to keep a good catalog of what you have in your home. You can't file an insurance claim if you don't know what it is you had in the sense of value, right? So what I do, and it's something that you can easily do, and this was literally something I started doing because of living in fire country back in California, is that you can take pictures of all of your most valuable possessions. Take pictures, create some kind of a catalog and an inventory for what it is you have. And yeah, you might not get very much money based on how much something costs you versus how much the insurance will cover, but at the end of the day, every single penny that you can recuperate from an emergency like that is going to be helpful at the end. So do what you can now and actually inventory the amount of valuable you have within your home. Inventory what it is you have that maintains some kind of value so that way you don't lose every single thing that you had if this actually happens to you. That's just something that you should probably do. Maybe you put it on a hard drive and you don't leave it up to the internet to access due to OPSEC and everything else, but at least have some way of confirming what was lost in your home if you ever found yourself in that position so that you can at least get some of that insurance money to cover it. Just my advice, just something you can do that's practical, but I also think it's important that you practice self-defense and I think it's important that you learn how to take care of yourself when it comes to these dangerous people who are more than willing to exploit a crisis and try to ruin your life from it. So hopefully this gives you some information. Hopefully this gives you something to think about. If you need anything else from me, you know where to go, magicprepper.com. Leave comments below and let's discuss this whole situation because it's disgusting. It's taking advantage of people in their worst time. It's a, a, a critical event that they're trying to deal with in the best way they can and they're doing what they're being told by the authorities and they're being punished for it in the process by these horrible people. So this is something that we have to consider, of course, within the community. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that I got a lot of this information from a friend over on Patreon. So I'm just saying, if you wanna be part of that, check it out, I'll leave a link below. Other than that, that's gonna be it for Magic Prepper.